Hey friends, it's Steven with Leviathan Snakes, and for this week's video, we are going to be talking about the idea that there is no such thing as bad publicity. And we'll go ahead and throw this out there right up front is I completely disagree with that. So we want to talk about like why I disagree with that and why it is super, super important that you should be mindful of your brand's image, not just simply trying to get your name out of there and drive brand awareness. So we hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, please like, comment, subscribe, but let's jump in it. The idea that there is no such thing of bad publicity stems from the concept that if you have something negative going on about your brand, your company, your business, that there's a very good chance that multiple people are going to be talking about it. And as they talk about it, it increases the awareness for your brand. So if you are a reptile business and for some reason there is like drama or controversy surrounding you and your brand, there is a very good chance that people will hear about your brand that had never heard about your brand before as people are talking about the drama because for like better or worse or anything, like we're people and people tend to like the idea of conflict. Even if they don't like enjoy participating it, they enjoy hearing about it because it's interesting and that conflict concept is one of the driving factors in just people psychology because if you can hear about a problem before you encounter the problem it is way more likely that you are going to be able to have an appropriate response to the problem when it comes time or if it comes time for you to encounter the same problem so because of this there's actually like studies that indicate that gossip in talking about negative things it's kind of like hardwired into our dna Now, going away from that, so the concept of getting your name out there and getting more people to hear about your brand is more important and more valuable than the perception of your brand is completely false. It is something that people say because it sounds kind of pithy, the idea of there's no such thing as bad publicity, and it helps kind of justify somewhat negative and poor behaviors. But I wanna give specific examples on how negative publicity 100% hurt the company, hurt the efforts that they were trying to do. This next little story doesn't have much to do with reptiles, but bear with me because it is important and it does kind of help illustrate this point. So during the 1980s, 1990s, there was this jewelry group in Britain called the Ratner Jewelry Group. And it was the biggest, the most successful jewelry group in Britain during the time. And they kind of specialized in providing jewelry and kind of luxury items to working class families. So as factory workers would save up and earn money, they might buy their significant other jewelry as a gift, wedding present, birthday present, um, anniversary, things like that. Now, the thing with this is it was geared towards working class people, so the items that they were doing were very, very affordable or, in a different perspective, very, very cheap. And because of this, it means that the build quality of them probably wasn't up to par if you are comparing it to something like super, super high-end luxury jewelry. Now, this group was super, super successful. It was the biggest jewelry group in all of Britain. Now, it was founded by the Ratner family, and when the son of the founder took over during like the 60s, 70s, and 80s, he eventually ended up talking during a conference to all of the directors and stuff like this, and this was public, about their jewelry. And he essentially said, it was a specific project, I think it was a decanter set. He, somebody had asked him like, why do people buy from them? Why are they, how are they able to make their stuff so cheap and people want it? And he essentially said, I don't remember the exact words, but paraphrase, that he doesn't know because their products are total crap. And it's really only cost four pounds 95 pence. People say to me, how can you sell this for such a low price? I say because it's total crap. Um, when this got out and it kind of got pushed out to all of these different families, all of these different people who were supporting their business, and they heard that the uh, founder's son, the chairman of the board at the time, he 
he thought that their products were crap. They were like, well, I'm not gonna buy it because I'm not gonna be buying something that's complete crap and giving it as a gift to my loved ones. And throughout the next few years, they end up losing like $300 million. They had to close like hundreds of stores. And eventually this specific comment is directly related to the downfall of the group. And they end up having to dissolve the guy, the Ratner, again, I don't remember his first name, but the son, he ended up like losing his job because the board voted him out. They got a new chairman. They actually completely changed and the Ratner Jewelry Group it does not exist anymore because they said something very controversial, even if they thought that it was kind of a joke at the time but that controversy killed their business. Even though people were talking about them, it did not help them out in the long run. So, if we are looking at reptiles, you might have a situation where you might think that if you are talking about something controversial or if you are kind of starting drama or really partaking in the drama, that it helps out your business because it makes more people talk about you. But the risk that's going on is that your target market, essentially in this case, it was the working class, working class families, that they may be turned off to the image that you are presenting and that their perception of you shifts from being a great place to buy something for their loved ones to the place that is going to insult their loved ones. And even though it probably got their name out there even more than it was before, it did not help them. And I think that this is a risk that happens when you partake in drama. So even though drama can get your name out there pretty well and you can get a lot of people talking about you or a lot of people knowing who you are, it is possible for it to have a negative impact on your business. So when we want to kind of step back from the story and look at it from what can we do and what should we do when we are talking about our brands in the reptile world, I think that it is super, super important to be very diligent and very proactive with the image that you are presenting to the world. If you are trying to say that you make amazing animals and you take amazing care of your animals, your media that you're putting out there, your videos on YouTube, Instagram reels, Instagram pictures, anything like that should reflect the same values. And I think that when you are building out your brand, when you're building out your business, I think understanding what your values are are, is so important because a lot of people don't really know and it's perfectly fine to be offensive. I think that having an offensive kind of style brand can work and it can appeal to the right customers in the right market if that's what you want to do. But if you are building up a brand that's supposed to be family friendly because you are wanting to make animals that will serve to get new people into the hobby and help grow the hobby from a base level, but you are going on rants and cussing out other people in the hobby and ultimately having a very kind of like confrontational persona, the idea that people are going to want to come into the hobby and get in the hobby through you, if you are having an image of being very confrontational, is really, really small. So you might actually turn off your target market. Besides social media and besides just kind of like online presence, I think that in-person perception is also really important to your brand as well. So there is the idea that a lot of people may want to start out doing shows even if they don't really have the animals for it because their idea is that they're getting their name out there and they're able to talk to different people in their local communities and they're able to build up a reputation that way. So that way when they do have animals, people will already know who they are. And I do think that this is somewhat kind of beneficial, but I think you have to be very, very careful about it. And the reason why you have to be careful about it is if you are going to a show every weekend or every other weekend in your local area and you're trying to build up that local presence, but you don't have the animals for it because you just don't have enough clutches and you're, it's kind of like in your off season. So instead, in order to have some animals, you buy wholesale and you're buying wholesale animals that people don't really want. Like it's not super good stuff and it might be like some normal males, maybe a cinnamon, and there's nothing wrong with these, but they're not necessarily going to make you stand out in the crowd. And then you are going to these shows and you are not really selling anything show after show after show after show, and you're bringing the exact same animals that are not super in demand every single time, what it is doing on top of getting your name out there is it's getting your name out there and it's associating the idea that you don't have very good 
good animals or animals that other people may want to buy. So when they see you in the future, they don't feel the need to come over and look at exactly what you have because they don't necessarily know that you have anything that they are going to want. So I think that being careful about this is something that you should do as well when you're considering your brand's perception is that if every time you're going to the show or the majority of the time you're going to the show, people are kind of looking at your animals and then passing by and you're having a very, very hard time selling them, I think that it might be a situation where you may want to wait until you have more animals and better animals or just more in demand animals for that specific market before you start going out so that way you are not running the risk that you get a reputation of not having very good stuff. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next week.